I hope everyone can see my screen. Okay. So I mean, uh, yesterday we had a class on top of a relational database. So I think none of the new students has joined. So a quick recap on top of that. But you can definitely go through the video for the detailing part. It was a very important thing. And uh, for the interview purpose, they might have questions. What is normalization for the tables and all? So you need to learn how to normalize a table. So basically, we have learned how to normalize a particular table uh, from, a, from a denormalized one. And what is the, uh, I mean, uh, why we are doing this? What is the, I mean, advantage on doing that thing? So you need to learn the same. Give me one second, please. So just of whatever we have done, that main thing is normalization part. After that, we have started for, I mean, uh, what is the key implementation? So for a particular table, there, there can be primary key. Primary key is the key identifier. That key can be unique in nature. Uh, I, I have uh, given you that particular example. Suppose we have uh, employee table, I mean, employee for a particular organization. So in that particular organization, there must be same, I mean, uh, employee name can be same for two or three resources, okay? Employee address must be same because the same address, two particular employees can be coming, okay? But in a particular organization, each of the employee can be uh, having a unique employee ID, okay? So based on the employee ID, we can recognize for that particular employee. So we can give the uniqueness on that particular column. That's why it's a primary key. Okay, so what is primary key? What is foreign key? And what is composite key? Composite key is based on multiple combination of columns. We can generate a particular key. So that is called composite key. What is foreign key? Uh, so those kind of stuff I have explained uh, the thing in previous day session. That is the last day. So please go through the video once as you have missed that one. After that, we have introduced the database. So we are using MySQL database. <laughs> I have given a link there uh, in, the, in the portal. I mean, uh, so you can just go to go through this portal and download MySQL. MySQL, a backend database should be there along with the database. So particular UI should be installed as well. And that UI should be helpful for doing the SQL queries. So we'll be learning SQL queries on top of this MySQL. So why we are choosing MySQL? It's an open source uh, free software. So you can quickly install it. And it's not a heavy software, actually. It's very simple. So we can install it. We can run our query. After learning SQL stuff, so we can uninstall the thing. OK, so after downloading it, install it, and configure it properly, give proper password there so that you can connect the same by logging in password. OK, so I'm now insert that particular. I'm now insert that particular database. And over there, I can see uh, those are the different databases available. I'm, I'm, I am able to enter uh, that MySQL instance. Rather, I can say over there, I have created that particular schema or database, data, data training. OK, so in the left hand panel of this software or this tool, it can be shown the schema browser, schema or databases, whatever I can say. Those are different databases. OK, each of the database or schema, I can store my tables based on the subject area. This is uh, this one I have created for my testing purpose. OK, and this one I have created Tetra data training for uh, I mean, whatever we will be learning, we can create it over here. So all the table related information should be presented over here. Just like this one. So table views, store procedures, function. OK, table should be present over here. View should be present over here. So this way, you can 
do that stuff. Okay, so yeah, so today we'll be learning the SQL part, how we can uh, do the SQL queries and all. Okay, if there is any stuck point for any cases or any scenarios, please stop me and ask me questions. And this is the basic thing, basic building block of data engineering. That is SQL, SQL, structured query language, uh, which is being used on top of relational database to fetch data, to create data and everything. So this is required by, I mean, if you are learning a particular tool based on data engineering and all, in that tool, maybe some code snippets is being used. That should be always a SQL. So SQL is the basic thing. You must need to know SQL if you if you are trying to work in a data engineering project. Okay, and it's very much simple. A few concepts should be there, but it's as simple as you can just uh, uh, try this thing only one time at your own machine. You can learn or you can understand. There is no hard thing over there. Okay, fine. I'm directly jumping into SQL part. So a structured query language is this, but that particular language we can segregate. I mean, this language is functions based on those five segments. The first one is called DDL. Under this DDL, we can use this kind of command. Create, drop, alter, truncate. Okay. So what DDL is used for? DDL is used for, we can create table. Okay, as we are learning table first, uh, so let's cover up table because table is the most important thing. Rather based on, I mean, after that, there are several database components as well. So after learning tables, we can go through them each, I mean, one by one. Okay, nothing to worry. So let's start with table. So DDL language, DDL means data definition language. Okay, so DDL is used to create a table or to do anything dependent on table structure related language. So the, the create statement will create the table, drop statement will drop the table from the database. Okay, alter, alter, alter the tables means we can alter the table structure. Okay, so some uh, column needs to needs to be added. We have defined a particular table, but uh, rather for a particular requirement, we we have to add a particular column for that table. Okay, so we need to use alter statement. Correct. So we need to update particular data type of a particular column. We can use alter statement. So whatever the thing, I mean, we have already declared the table structured and all. After that, we need to update something on top of table structure, then we need to use alter statement. I think critical. And truncate statement, what is this for? Truncate is for uh, truncation of data. So it will truncate all the records. Okay, and the table should be in empty state. The table should be present in the database, but no data should be available. Okay, so those are the four commands we need to use while we, while we'll be learning DDL, data definition languages. And we'll be learning today DML as well. Today we'll be covering DDL and DML. DML is called data manipulation language. Okay, over there we are using insert command, update command, delete command. So insert is for inserting records to a particular table. Update means we'll be updating the record for a particular table. Delete means we'll be deleting the records from the particular table. So it's, it should be based on only data. Okay, the command should be using only for data in the table. And DDL is, this has been used only for the tabular structure. Okay, this is the difference between DDL, data definition language and data manipulation language. Okay, let's go ahead with these two topics with more details in, the, in my latter slides. But if there is any stuck point to anyone, kindly stop me and ask me question. Okay, otherwise uh, you, can, you can be stuck. So I'll be also requesting after installing the software, I mean, if you did, I mean, do not install it till yet, please install MySQL. Or if you have any 
database software that is also fine as you are learning mysql over here so whatever syntax i'm practicing over here the same kind of thing you can also practice at your, at your side when you have some free time hardly it will take 10 to 15 minutes from your side to learn it. and uh, if you have a different software then the syntactical thing should be a bit modified i mean the basic structure of the languages are i mean similar okay uh, but suppose we are using some inbuilt function so there should be some naming convention difference for inbuilt, inbuilt functions and all so just check just run the same thing if you are getting any error if you are using a different database then just have a search over there or please ask me i can help you which kind of syntax it should be required for that time okay okay then i'm uh, moving into the ddl part ddl is called data definition language so uh, the first thing is create a table i already mentioned it you can create i mean uh, each of the statement create a table we will be using create keyword alter a table we can use alter keyword truncate a table we can use truncate keyword drop a table i can use drop keyword okay and uh, okay we'll be just quickly go through with the hands-on part in our software side as well but yeah this thing we just need to remember data type constraint and column length so while declaring the ddl of a table that means while declaring the data definition languages the table we need to know this kind of stuff as well the data type it's very much important so while declaring a table we need to specify the column over there as well okay and there may be several columns okay each of the columns should be storing some values okay so which kind of value that particular column should be stored we need to declare the same while declaring for the ddl okay so if we just declare something with int then that particular column should be only containing integer data type so we cannot insert some character over there it should be throwing error okay so uh, it can be integer it can be float it can be var care var care means it should be character or string format in nature uh, date there is a by default date format as well for mysql i'll be also telling the same thing to you and with the data type we need to put the length okay so what size i will be expecting for that particular column so it should be maximum size i need to declare so greater than that size if i just try to insert any any record then that should be fair so i need to choose such a um, such particular column length so that it should it should not okay or it should accommodate all the records Suppose I'll be storing some employee name. Okay. Then employee name, I just need to put the character so that my employee name will take everything there. I mean, the name should not be such bigger so that our conventional length can cannot able to accommodate that particular record. Okay. So just this is a theoretical part. Let's go ahead. I mean, what is constraint? I'll be quickly coming. I'm just going uh, into the software side, how to create the database. So I'm inside the MySQL over here. And um, I'm working in that schema, data data training. So whatever query I'll be running, it should be running on top of this schema only. If I'm creating a table, the table should be created over here. Okay. So uh, let's create it. Let's create employee table over here create table okay how to create a table it's a ddl okay so we are just going into the ddl demonstration now ddl means i'm repeating once more time data definition language and that should be responsible for any tabular structure related languages so first of all we need to create the table if i just create the table the table should be created over here in this portion okay so how to create a table only the syntax is very simple create command should be there create table command should be there table name so i'm creating employee table 
it's a user defined name whatever table you need to create just you need to create that thing create table table name put the braces open brace and close brace inside that brace you need to declare the column name what different column you want to put so suppose i want to put employee id okay employee id it should be integer data type so i'm declaring integer by default integer should be having i think eight uh, character i mean eight uh, length maximum length so i'm not declaring any size for integer moving into the next uh, uh, integer then i can put uh, employee first name it should be character data type so i'm declaring where cat so first the column name then which kind of data type i need to put after that the size of the column for integer the default size should be 8 so no need to declare while you are declaring integer for character obviously you need to declare the length so first time apply first time i'm assuming it should not be more than 40 okay 40 characters so i'm just putting 40 so anyone who is trying more than 40 values not sure i mean that should not be possible actually but such a record is which is coming more than 40 then it should be throwing an error rather we can just update it to 100 okay so our name cannot be even a first name cannot be more than 100 so this is my column name this is my data type this is my column name this is my data type this is my length or maximum length of that particular column and each of the column is being separated by a comma okay I'm just introducing employee last name as well. It should be also bad cat. I'm just putting 50. Okay. Uh, any other thing we need to put? Employee salary. Okay. It should be, I can put integer or float, anything. Float data type. Okay. Any other thing? Uh, if okay uh, so let's put this thing only as of now okay so uh, at the end i mean the last column we should not put any comma okay this is the last column i am not putting any other columns there give me one second please okay so uh, there is nothing to put let me just execute it select everything over here okay i run it there is no error if i can also check the log of how it's running or everything just click on over click there and you can see create table table name has been executed successfully okay so if i just refresh the thing over here i can see employee table has been created into a data training this is the new table i can expand the thing over here i can click on the columns i can see those are the columns been available employee id it's integer in type employee first name is where care employee last name it should be also where care employee salary it should be integer okay i can also check the thing let me just i'm just doing a select query select star from employee to check the tabular structure of that data so it's not a ddl language i'll be coming to the select or maybe we'll be elaborating what is select language maybe in the next session it is a dql just like we are learning now ddl it should not be select query is not in ddl it is in dql data query language so just to just an overview we have created the table now i'm just checking on top of table what is the data i haven't inserted any data till now just i'm checking yes the blank table has been created with the employee id is a column second column is employee first name third column employee last name fourth column is employee salary Okay. 
now i'm discarding okay let me put the select statement no issue so as of now by ddl we are able to create a table that is the employee table over here okay now uh, so we have alter a table i'll be altering the table suppose uh, i want to insert another column okay So what is the syntax? Alter table. Table is a keyword. Alter is a keyword. And the table name. The table name should be employee because that is the existing table that I want to modify. Okay. So add. I am I'm just trying to add a particular column which is not there. So what kind of thing? Uh, employee designation. Employee designation. Okay. Or rather, in short, put D E S G. It should be where uh, care 100. Okay. So, alter table, table, alter table, table name, add, add means I'm adding a new column, column name, and columns data type. Okay. Let's run it. Okay, it has been successfully run. Let me refresh the thing and just select employee table. Yeah, we can see a new column has been introduced. Employee designation having Varicat 100. I can also execute this thing. Yeah, we can see this is the new column being available in our tabular structure. Okay, I can drop the column as well. So the same statement, alter table, table name, drop. Drop, just put the column name. No need to put the data type. If I just execute it, it has been executed successfully. Let me run it. Yes, designation has been omitted on the tabular structure. Okay, so after creation of the table, if we just want to modify any particular column, we need to use alter statement, altering the table. We can rename the particular column name. Okay. Those are the important thing. Okay, fine. Uh, any doubt from anyone till now? Whatever we are learning, any doubt from anyone? Nothing. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, few more things on alter I'll be coming quickly, especially the constraint part I haven't learned yet. So, uh, constraint part, whatever things, let, let me quickly check. Okay, truncate a table, drop a table. I'll be coming this thing quickly, but not now. After, I mean, just I'm holding this part till now, till alter table. Now I want to insert some data. Okay, so if we just trying to insert the data inside the table, I'll be working with the data. So that should be inside data manipulation language. That is DML. Okay, so coming to DML topic. So as I told, as I mentioned, if it's tabular structure related things, it should be DDL. So in DDL, we have learned create and alter till now. For DML, we are, we are used, I mean, we'll be going to learn insert after delete. So those will be working on top of data only. So to insert some data into particular table, we need to use insert statement. To update the data on a particular table, it should be update statement. To delete particular records inside the table, it should be delete statement. Okay, so let's jump onto this query explorer. So right hand side is the query explorer. We can write the query and it, this is the execute button. Select the particular portion you want to execute, execute it. And, and this is the output where you can see the result. Okay. So now I'm going to insert some record to the employee table. So what is the syntax? There should be insert keyword, insert into table. 
employee. Okay. Put values. I can directly put the values. Sing, I mean, sequentially. The first, okay, let me just quickly refresh it. Yeah, employee ID. Employee ID should be coming first. Suppose one is the employee ID. Okay. First name should be, let me put any name. Uh, let put Anil. Okay. And uh, just remember when it's an integer data type, no need to put code. But if it is a character data type or string data type, we have to enclose it with I mean quotes only. The starting quote and the ending quote over there. Okay. I'm putting the last name. After first name, this should be last name. I'm putting Sharma. Okay. And designation. I'm just putting suppose accountant. Okay. In designation, okay, it's not designation, sorry, it's employee salary. Designation I have added, but I have dropped it again by auto statement. So currently the tabular structure is employee ID, employee first name, employee last name, and employee salary. So salary per month, uh, let's put 70,000, 70K. Okay. Uh, okay, let me quickly run it. Okay, it has been successfully executed. If I just try to select the query over here, yes, I can see employee ID one, employee name, employee last name, and employee salary. We can insert one more uh, particular data over here, one or two. Employee ID two, let's put some name. Mm, suppose because. Because, because past one. Okay, just putting his salary to uh, uh, 95,000. Okay. Yeah, it's successfully executed. Uh, let's put another one. This should be my last one. Uh, Ramesh. Ramesh Das. Okay. Uh, let's put her salary to 1 lakhs. Okay. Let's execute it. Okay. So we have able to insert three records inside the table. Now I am selecting the table once more time for a visualization of the table. What is there in the table? Yes, so whatever we have inserted, the data is present over here. Okay, so we have three, I mean, four records over here. First one is employee ID. I mean, this is those are the column name and each of the records we have inserted over here by insert statement. So insert is one of the important keyword for the DML where we can insert records into table. Okay, so this is the first DML topic we just learned. After that insert, we have update statement. So by update, what we can do? We can update the record value, the existing record value. Okay. How to do that? Update table name. Update employee. Okay. Set. Set is a keyword. Update table name. Update is a keyword. Set is a keyword. Set the value. What I need to set? Uh, suppose employee salary has been increased for a need. Set employee salary equal 80,000. Okay. But I, if I just ran it, it should be run, it should be executed, and everyone's salary should be 80,000. So I need to segregate, it should be only for employee ID 1. So I need to put a filter where, where is the keyword, employee ID equal 1. That means I'll be updating that table, update table name, set is a keyword, set employee salary equal 80,000, for which particular record? 
there I need to put where employee ID equal one. Okay. Let's run it. I have updated the employee table. Okay, I can see Anil's salary has been updated from 70,000 to 80,000. Okay. Any doubt from any any doubt from anyone till now? Nothing. Okay. So uh, after the insert, we just learned update. If we want to uh, think about delete statement, what is delete for DML? So it's delete. Delete from table. Where employee ID equal one. Okay, I executed it. So whatever I have done, delete from employee. Delete is the keyword from is a keyword employee means for the table okay if i just execute this thing everything should be deleted okay so i just put delete from employee that means i'm deleting from employee then i'm putting some filter condition which particular records i need to delete only employee where the employee id is one that particular record will be deleted so i have executed this let me just run the select query once more time Yes, you can see employee ID one is not there. The entire record has been deleted. Okay, so delete statement is a particular DML statement which will delete the records. Okay, so this is the third DML just to learn. Now there is two more topics I left it there for DDL, truncate and drop. Truncate and drop. If we just do that, we cannot use that table anymore that's why i just keep it open or keep i mean keep it hold these two uh, because i mean if i just drop this thing then i need to create the table from the beginning again so i just cover up this dml insert update delete means how to insert records how to update existing records how to delete existing records we learn these things i think there is no doubt if there is any please tell me after that i'll be going ahead with truncate and drop Okay, those are very much important. Um, interviewer may ask, what is the difference between truncate and drop? Those kind of questions and all. Okay, so. Okay, one more thing I just, I was about to tell you. In this topic, we learn data type. Data means what kind of data type should be there for a particular column, we learned it. What is constraint? I haven't learned it yet. So, what is column length? We have already learned, learned it. So uh, column length means the maximum column, I mean, what particular column uh, length should be there to accommodate the data. So it should be five, six, seven, and just like for first name, employee first name, I have put 100 over there. So the particular column data cannot be more than 100 in first name. Okay, and what is constraint? We can uh, impose some constraint value, okay, for a particular table. Suppose it can be primary key. Primary key means that particular key should be unique in nature. That I told you a few times ago that uh, the employee ID, it should be unique in nature. So someone is just trying to enter, in, I mean, enter or insert another record is having employee ID 3. That should be throwing error because our employee ID 3 is already present in that particular company. So if anyone wants to enter, then it should be four or five, anything, which is not present. A new employee ID would be generated for that particular person. Okay, so that's why we need to impose the constraint that we need to define employee ID as a primary key. So we, we can define the same thing while create the table itself, or even we can uh, declare the same thing during the alter statement. Okay, so it's just like alter table table name, add constraint
constraint constraint yeah my spelling is correct const r a t r a i n t okay fine add constraint put the constraint name i can put just like p key it's a name only and what is the value primary key what it what should be its operation it's a keyword primary key is the keyword p key is just a definite i mean just i'm giving a name to this constraint okay and what i should pass inside that primary key it should be employee id only i need to de define a particular column or rather i can define multiple columns that should be working as a composite key okay so i'm just giving primary key and i'm just allowing this thing to be a primary key okay let me run it it has been successfully completed if i just go to i mean refresh it just put employee then you can see there is bold thing and it's integer as well as primary key pk so uh, if i just try okay let me just check the table okay so two three records are already there i'm just going to enter another three different name okay ananya let me put the same thing there'll be no issue if i just try to execute the thing okay it's showing me an error duplicate entry for three employee id i mean it's a primary key and we are trying to enter employee id 3 again i have declared the primary key that's why it's showing an error let me drop it let me execute the same thing after dropping the constraint Alter table table name drop constraint p key okay okay and some syntactical issue is there constraint p key doesn't exist I'm not able to drop the primary key. Let's see what is happening. So if I able to drop it, even I can drop it from here. Let me try once more. I can check it from this user interface as well. Okay, this is a tables metadata information. Just right click, click on this I button. Okay, so. Okay. Can drop the index. It's successfully dropped from here. Um, but it's only the index dropped, but primary key hasn't dropped, I'm assuming. Yeah, primary key is also dropped. Fine. So if I just try to insert values three over here, yes, it's successfully executed. I can see now if I just going to run it. Yeah, for employee ID three, different value has been inserted. But as per the employee, I mean, it should not be a good scenario actually. Employee ID should be unique in nature. Just to give you an example, we need to impose this kind of constraint of this table to restrict wrong value in the data okay that is not a good data actually that is a bad data okay so now uh, hope you can understand it correct so we uh, need to incorporate some constraint on top of tables so that uh, this kind of issue or error we can avoid fine okay so Moving on to the next topic. Okay, what are the lefts of DDL? It's truncate and drop. So everything we have covered till now, only truncate and drop is left from the DDL side. So our table is there. In the table we have, in the employee table, we have this kind of data. If I am just going to truncate the table, what is the command? Truncate table keyword and table name. Truncate table table name. 
truncate keyword table is a keyword employee is a table name if i just execute it all the data should be truncated but the tabular structure should be there i can execute this thing but no data should be present over here okay so truncate means it will delete all the records of this table now let me use drop drop keyword drop table table name it will be dropping or deleting entire table structure from this database itself it will not keep any records as well as any tabular structure everything should be erased if i just execute it just dropping it you can see employee table has been vanished if i just try to select the query we can get an error that particular table in data data training dot employee this is the schema name or database name dot the table name that means inside that database employee table does not exist that's why select query has thrown a error that they are not able to fetch the data from this employee table because we have already dropped it so nothing to do with the table anymore okay so we just learned for ddl how to drop and how to truncate the table okay any doubt from anyone till now we covered everything for today's session we learned ddl and dml so tomorrow onwards we will be learning uh, dql dql is a vast thing actually this is dql only the select statement and lots of things should be there i mean on top of select we will be working there will be no manipulation on data manipulation part i mean we cannot update any particular tabular data rather we can represent the data by various way that is called dql okay and at the end we will be learning dcl and tcl it's it's very small thing actually we can cover in a single day those stuffs so we just learned ddl and dml uh, updating i mean uh, creating updating of tabular structure and when the tabular structure is there and it's finalized we can insert the record update the record or delete our particular required records so uh, if there is any doubt or any stuck point please tell me anyone nothing from your side and if there is nothing i'll be requesting everyone to try the thing at your own own software uh, own uh, local machine whatever you have installed if there is any particular database you have installed just try once by running the ddl and dml statements by your own okay so then you can will be habituated i mean it's very simple actually one or two liners code but it's so much powerful okay okay then uh, we have covered everything for today let's connect tomorrow with dql part tomorrow i mean it's a weekend so we'll be connecting on monday with the dql part okay so um, that's all for today thank you everyone happy weekend to all of you let's connect tomorrow or uh, monday bye bye have a great day